when you buy a product, sometimes it comes in a resealable plastic bags. What do you do with it? Do you usually throw it away or do you reuse it to store other things? Whatever you usually do with them, now consider upcycling them to use in your craft projects. I got this idea from Sherry, the Post Paper Ladies, tear top pouches that I watched last year. You can find the link to her video on the description box. There are three types of pockets I made using resealable bags. A simple resealable pocket, a resealable pocket with a window, and a see-through zip pocket. But there are so many usage possibilities for these pockets. You can use these pockets to present the craft you are sending to other people. Put the item inside the decorated pouch, zip it and send it away. When your recipient receives this, they can use this bag on their project as a floating pocket or stick it on a journal page. You can even use it as a journal page. Put a tab on one side, stick it to a journal page, and you have your resealable pocket page. I have also used a white one as a journal page. This one. This is a white resealable bag that I use as a journal page for my daughter's art book. If you have a big one like this, you can also consider using it as the base for flips, flaps, envelopes. You can also use the pouch with a window to make a shaker journal card, a shaker tag, or even a shaker photo pocket. I made this for Miss Cutie's graduation album. I'm going to put her photo inside the pouch and then keep it in the, with the graduation album or use it for the cover. Before we start, let's talk about the Ziploc bag. Ziploc bag can come in different styles. Clear bag with no prints on both sides or with a removable stickers which you can remove without leaving any residue. You can use this for all three types of pockets with or without a window. Ziploc bag with a print on one side or a non-removable sticker on one side. You can use this for pockets with or without a window. I don't suggest using these bags for a see-through pocket unless you don't mind seeing the print. And last, a Ziploc bag with prints or non-removable stickers on both sides. This is only good for the non-window pocket. You can still see the prints inside the bag like this. So if this bothers you, it is not the right bag to use. To make this zip pocket, you need Ziploc bag, pretty papers, and typical tools, a glue, scissor, ruler, and pen. I will start with the easiest way to make this zip pocket. Cut two sheets of paper larger than the Ziploc bag. If your Ziploc bag is looking like this, just trim this part off. And that's how I got this bag. I like to cut my paper around 3 8 or half 8 inches larger than my bag. And then apply a adhesive on one side of the bag and adhere it to the center of the paper. When you are done, apply adhesive on the other side and don't forget these three sides of paper as well. If your Ziploc bag has a hole like I have here, be careful not to put any adhesive on this, pack, on this part. After you apply adhesive, align the second piece of paper on top of the first one. When you are doing this, make sure you have the zip pocket open, otherwise you will have like a bulge of air inside the pocket and it won't be easy to properly adhere these two sheets of paper. Also, don't forget the top part, the top flap of the bag as well. And just be careful not to put adhesive on the paper because we don't want to shut this off. 
and that's it it is that simple and easy if you want you can sew around the three edges to strengthen the bonding you can use any paper thickness with this method and if your edges are slightly off like I have here just trim it off the second method which happened to be my favorite is to wrap the paper around the back to make a more rounded edge finish it's a bit more tricky and you can't use thick paper I use my thick master board to make this and the paper seems to always want to spare it from the bag. I had applied glue like three times on this bag and it still won't burn very well. For this method, you need a paper at least half inches wider than twice the bag's width. If your paper is not wide enough, you can lengthen it with another strip like I did here. And then measure the back height and add half inches plus more if you'd like to add an extra for, for the top. With the back opening on the top, align one edge of the back on the paper like so. Make sure that your paper orientation is correct and then fold the paper over, crease and flip this piece over and then fold the excess paper over as well. And then open the piece, align your bag on the bag, on the paper so you will have around half an inch excess on the bottom. And then use your pen or your pencil to make a mark of the bottom of the bag like this. And then you will want to cut this excess off. After cutting the bottom excess, taper the corner of the flaps so the corner won't be too bulky when folded. And now these two pieces are ready to be adhered. I like to keep the flap hidden, so I start with the side with the flap and then the other side. And it's done. It's not much more complicated than the first method. It's basically making a pocket to wrap the plastic bag. To make the window pocket, all you have to do is to cut the opening before you adhere the paper to the plastic bag. I do this by positioning my bag in the prepared paper, then use my pencil to mark the bag. Two bottom corners and the top right under the zip so this is where the zip is and I just mark it right under it and then I use my ruler to measure half an inches in and then draw the window it can be more than half inches or less than half inches it is up to you do what make you happy I will just use my ruler as well to make sure that I have a really good position of the bag. I mean, a equal width on the top and the bottom because when I put my bag on top of it, I kind of slide it a little bit. So if you look closely, you can see this is a little bit wider than the one on the bottom. If you don't mind about it, then it's fine. but. I want to make sure that I have a uniform look and then I do half inches in and this is my window frame will be I'm going to cut this part off and then I'm, go I'm ready to add it to the, to the plastic bag. This is how my paper looks after I cut the window opening. And now the next thing I need to do is to adhere these papers into the plastic bag. I am using the one with the printed side so I can show you how 
to make the window pocket with a plastic bag that is not see-through on both sides. So what you want to do is adhere a non-window paper on the imperfection side. Again, my plastic bag has a hole on it and I do not want to put a glue on this hole. So I have to be careful about it. And then after I adhere the full sheet, which is easier to manage, I'm going to put glue on my window sheet and then align it to the first paper, first sheet of paper. My window pocket is almost done. If you don't mind seeing the print, then you're done. But I don't want to see the print. So I'm going to use this cut off paper to stick it on the inside to hide the, this print. After I put a generous amount of glue, I'm going to put this piece inside the bag and then use the window to align it. And that's it. Next thing, if I want, I can just sew around this just to enforce the bonding of three sides. And my bag, I just need to let it dry. And then it's ready for me to use. It's a zip pocket and there's a window too. The third style of pocket, the see-through pocket, is basically the window pocket on both sides. Cut the window on both sides and adhere. I found the easiest method to have an aligned window on both sides is by cutting the window on one side, then fold or align the second piece, marks the window position, and cut. And that's how I made these zip pockets. These are the three that I made during this tutorial. I have not decorated any of these. I only sew around three edges of this two piece. I'm going to decorate this when I know what I'm going to use this in a project. I want to thank again Sherry, the paper post lady, for giving me this idea. And thank you for watching ladies. Happy crafting. Bye.